am Manish. Uh, I was born on 22nd April 1973 in a small town called Deoghar, which was then in Bihar, now in Jharkhand. They say uh, when I was born, I was born at 6.45 p.m. in the evening, it was dark. Lights went off usually. And I was born uh, amidst lantern. I don't know how many people know, but there was lanterns which were bought, brought in, and my mother delivered me. Okay. That's the problem. Okay. But one thing more happened that day, that evening. It rained. It rained heavily. There were lightnings everywhere, and that night, my father lost everything what he had. They say I was born in Mula Nakshatra, and that's what hurt my father. From a very rich man, he turned to a very poor man. That one single night when I was born, that evening when I was born. And then when I was brought home, I was only ugly duckling. I mean, like I was dark. My all brothers were, were white, gore. My mother was gora and my father was gora. And they said, like, year raat mein change ho gaya lagta hai. That was one of my most negative point. I think I, I lived with that inferiority complex for years. Then came schooling, but 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 my my mother loved me, and she was. She used to tell me that you look like me, and I was not very much convinced, but I was like, okay, fine. And then few incidences happened in my life uh, where I realized that we are really poor. And if I think about it, the first incidence which comes in is uh, in class nine. Uh, we were all studying together in St. Francis. Some of my friends are here from the school. St. Francis School, we are in class nine. And there was an excursion which was organized by the school and everybody had to pay some money and to go on that excursion. And I couldn't go. I was so willing to go, but I couldn't go because we didn't have the money. That was the time where I felt that we were poor, we didn't have money, and we need to, we need to earn money. Money is important in life. And the second incident happened, which was like three, four years down the line, when... When my father was arrested because, um, uh, because he didn't pay the bank dues and uh, we had no other option but to sell my mother's ornament, uh, which, was, which, was his la which was her last ornament. And I sold to a person who had actually Eve teased my elder sister and I had a fight with him. But in that small town, that was only money lender. And when, when I went and knocked his door because I didn't realize it was his door, and when he opened the door, I was like, I died. But then we needed that money. We needed that 70 odd thousand rupees so that uh, we can come out with this problem. I did take back the tournament three, four years down the line, but, but then that killed me then and there. And that's where I decided that this place, this earth, needs money. You need money. And that's very important. So that's my initial life. Uh, one important thing I learned in that life was that you need to move on. You need to grow. You need to make big in this life. And without, without making big, you are nothing. You are absolutely nobody. And that's where I started my journey. And throughout this journey of 42 years, I knowingly, unknowingly, consciously, unconsciously, I developed a set of principles, and I like to tell my story on that principle and a set of rules. I like to start with the set of principles, and I call them Rocky, R-O-C-K-E-E. -E. They are my principles of life, which knowingly, unknowingly, and consciously, unconsciously, I, I put it in my, inculcated in my nature, and that's what made me what I am today. R stands for respect and love. And I feel that each of us need to respect ourselves, to love ourselves, because it is we, our life, which is more important than anything else in this world. If we respect ourselves, if we love ourselves, we'll be able to respect others and love others. 
and that is very important and that brings me to the second level is that respect each and every individual who comes across in your life because each and every individual has a story as painful as yours as deadly as fearsome as yours some come out and tell it some don't some stay with it. so respect each and every individual then comes o and that stands for openness and transparency what i found in my life was as long as i was hiding that i am not poor that we are rich it was very difficult you had to act a lot but then i realized it's very important that you come up and say look we don't have money we are poor let's be open with it let's be transparent and that made my life easier whatever you are you should be and that makes life lot easier it's very difficult to act all throughout so be open be transparent and that brings to me the next word is c courage courage is important in life you need to have courage without courage you won't walk that extra mile which will give you wonders you know i am a ceo of a company which i established some 10 years back which is worth 10 billion dollars today i started that company some 10 years back and one thing which made me possible to achieve that was the word courage and this this company was in nigeria some of my friends and colleagues and partners are from nigeria and who have come all the way to to attend this and and they know me what i'm talking about is in 2007 and i i was there in 2005 6 in 2007 when our company was attacked by militants and i was under the gunshots and there was like the shooting going on for 45 minutes and then they abducted like 13 people of ours all indians including three two women and two children and it was all over india national television i was there in nigeria and took me lot of courage to fight with those militants negotiate with them and take them out bring them out and make them uh, free and it took me 21 year 21 days to do that i couldn't have done if i didn't have this courage so courage is important to bring you and to accomplish your dreams and then word then comes the word k that starts for knowledge that stands for knowledge and training life is a leveler life is a teacher life is a book read it you need to learn you need to have this knowledge you need to always metamorphosize yourself every day grow from your own lessons and that's what i have done and for me knowledge is very important you need to train yourself and you and your life are the best teachers they'll teach you every day every circumstances will teach you and then we have the word e which stands for empathy empathy is important principle in my life because i always felt i have also gone through sexual abuse in my life thank harish i could i could speak that liberated me empathy is important because everybody has some something common and it's very important that somebody who are attending to in life you need to empathize with him or her he and her he and she would have a story it's very important to to empathize with and how and when and how where this somebody is coming to you that of course goes in along with respect but you need to have that word empathy in you to grow in life and the last word is again e which stands for entrepreneurship i had nothing i ran away from my house at the age of 19 because i believed that uh, i need to do something more i had dreams which i had to do but one important thing which i learned from uh, from my father from my family was entrepreneurship anything which you do even what i am speaking here if it doesn't add value to me or somebody who is listening stop it you need to be entrepreneurial in your thought in your process and that made me create one of the biggest empires one of the biggest petrochemical companies of africa in last 10 years we make a profit of more than 7000 crores in a year and when we started the company was running in losses in 2005 6 and i have been heading that company for the age of 33 so entrepreneurship is very important 
and without that without adding value you cannot you cannot live your your life would be a waste this is the set of principles rocky r o c k e e and i'm not teaching it but i want to just tell you that this is very important be be you know rock your life and then there are a set of rules which i follow and i call it and i acronymed it and it's like don't break friendships and it's very important it's very interesting d o d o stands for be a doer and a dreamer dare to dream and i firmly believe that if you can dream you can achieve the most and the maximum of what you can dream you can't go beyond what you can dream so dream limitless and i firmly believe that god has given you a thought to dream god has also given you the power to achieve it trust me it's possible i dreamt to make films god gave me that power to make films i did that and and i achieved it from nothing i had nothing i had to beg for 5 rupees to even eat my breakfast trust me i enacted as if i was a jain because in jain uh, there was food was only for 8 rupees and we didn't have money so i also learned those navkar mantras so that i should be <laughs> i should act as if a jain to have that to have that lunch which is only for 8 rupees in jodhpur so be a dreamer and be a doer because if you dream and you back up your dream with your work work hard you'll achieve it and god gives you that power if god gives you that dream god gives you that power to achieve that dream be a doer because remember when and this is something which arnold has said remember when you are parting around there are people who are working hard to become more smarter so be a doer work hard and then n stands for naysayers no sayers is very important when you walk in the life there will people who say uh this is not possible it's not possible you cannot create a fortune 500 company you cannot you cannot bring your bosses into fortune 500 you know for forbes richest list you cannot be one of the highest paid executives coming from india there will be no sayers ignore them they're going to pull you believe in yourself forget this no sayers there will be those who will be clapping first for your achievements trust me ignore them take that strength and then there is word called t that's for time management and here is how look at my life i'm 42 and i feel like by 65 i'll be done if i live beyond that then it's okay god's grace So I have what 23 years left. Each year is like what 500 Sundays. Each 10 years is like 500 Sundays. So 500, 500, 1000, and another 250. Only 1250 Sundays left in my life. So little a time, and so much to do. So you need to manage your time. 1250 weekends left. That's all. And that's how I look into my life. every weekend has to add value i have to do something new i have to paint i have to write i have to tell stories i have to make films i have to run my company i have to run my business i have to manage my portfolio i have to do my social service i have to do a lot and that's where time management and multitasking comes in life so t stands for time management and always remember count your life in weekends left i'm telling you you'll be scared I'll start doing a lot of things very, very, very fast. And you say, "Okay, this procrastination is over. Let me do things." It's only like most of us here. I think only 1,200 weekends left. <laughs> <laughs> and then the word "friend" friend comes, and it's very important to me because we are born in a family. We can't choose a family, but what we can choose is our friends. What we can choose is our partners. believe me when i was hungry when i didn't have money my friends gave me the food believe me when i was lying low my friends pat my back and said look stand up you'll do it you can choose your partner you can choose your life partner you can choose your friends and trust me without friends without partners you can't achieve anything in this life family doesn't help trust me that they don't help 
they will actually screw you. They will criticize you at your back. And if you make money, they'll come to you like, Mujhe ye bhi karna hai, wo bhi karna hai, and all those things. Give them money, help them, but don't depend on them. Depend on your friends. They are going to help you. And then comes the word S. Because I said don't break friendships. So friend and ships, S stands for S. And S is very important, is society. It takes a village to make a man. Nobody is self-made. I don't call myself as a self-made. Everybody has put in, contributed into me. My friends, my naysayers, my enemies, my society, my school, my college, my degrees, my partners, my wife, my son, everybody has put in energy to make me what I am. And it's very important to recognize that. It's very important to give back to the society. Because you're not going to take whatever you have back when you're dead and gone. Everybody has to die. So give back to the society. Fools die rich. Give back to the society. And that's why like I have been doing this. We have a school called Society for Rational Development in Jodhpur. We run a school where we do this education of the kids from village who can't pay the fees. We, we have a full-fledged school. More than 300 students study. And they have even iPads and, and everything. And they, they're growing big. They're growing big, better. And I have, I have been doing a lot of social services. I don't want to talk on it. But give back to the society because that's your responsibility. And then I have added two more points, and which is very important because I took advantage because I'm getting this opportunity to speak is never speculate in life. Don't invest in share market. Please don't do that. You'll lose money. That speculation is the worst thing what you can do in life. And whenever in life, you'll see there are always two ways. One is that speculative route, which looks very, very soothing, calm, and a shortcut. And then there is a hard work route, which is long. Take the longer one. Take that hard work route. Don't speculate in life for money or for, for name or for fame or anything. <sighs> Work hard. And it will give you, if it, it will give you whatever you want. I speculated very early in my life and I lost everything when I was in DCOM. And that's where I said I won't invest any time in shares. I'll never speculate in my life to earn money. Money comes to you. I had nothing. Uh, I'm telling you sincerely, I had nothing, 97, 98. When I finished my final studies, my MBA, I was happy because I was recruited by a company and they paid me a first class train ticket to come in. And I said, no, I'll bought the ticket. I sent them the bill. I got the reimbursement. I went in an economy class and I made some money out of it. I <coughs> Today I have more than what? 200, 200, 250 crores in my pocket. And I did this all with my hard work and all with my dreams. And it is possible. And then I would like to say the last point. And that is dare to dream. Though I started with doers and dreamers, but I said dream, and it's possible. I'm standing here today because a lot of people here in Bombay think I'm a filmmaker. I've produced films like Aankho Dekhi, Masan, Amrika. Now next release is Dhanak, then X, um, Waiting, and I have like seven more films. Nobody, I don't have any connection with the film industry, uh, but what I had was this passion of making good films, making fantastic films without having any, any commercial objective in, in mind. But important was that films should be made so that we, live, uh, we leave a legacy behind. That after 20 years, 30 years, 40 years down the line, when we are dead and gone, people still talk about those films. People still love those films and would, would be there. So I would like to end, or let's say I, I have one more point. I, want to say. I would like to point out that live a, a legacy behind, because we are all going to die. But 
we need to leave some leave something behind which will be you know like cognizance of the fact that you lived on this earth live a legacy behind that's very important your kids your grandchildrens your family members your down the earth family should remember you that there was something there was somebody called manish who did those things so live a le legacy behind and the last point i want to say and very important for we indians are that we need to develop hobbies we generally don't develop hobbies and i what i did was i i started painting very early i paint i started writing i write i sing i i i, I write all, i develop lot of hobbies because post retirement when you finish maybe 60 62 63 that's what will take you ahead in your life sometimes we finish our journey as far as professionals concerned if our active life is concerned and suddenly feel that vacuum what to do next so try photography paint write speak read do whatever develop couple of hobbies in your life that will enrich your life that will make your life complete i think that's all what i have to say about my life thank you No, I I don't want to sing, but I'll I'll no no. I don't want to sing. I'll read a poem. I'll read a poem uh, which I I brought actually. I can read a poem. The poem has a heading: No matter what. No matter what, keep smiling in life. No matter what, keep trying in life. No matter what, do cry sometimes along with your smiles. No matter what, along with your rests, walk a few miles. No matter what, help someone while you help yourself. No matter what, love someone while you love yourself. No matter what, feel your pains while you celebrate your gains. No matter what, trust the sun while you enjoy the rains. No matter what, keep your dreams alive while you reconcile with your failures. No matter what, thank God in your prayers. No matter what be close to your heart though you walk thousands of miles no matter what keep space for some pause amidst your tries no matter what trust yourself while you heed to others no matter what live your life love your life because there's only one life you have to live thank you